So now what do I get if I start multiplying this out? B squared, B squared good. Minus, minus. B A cosine C. B A cosine C, good. What would my next term be? Minus B A cosine C. So what do I get? I have B A cosine C and a B A cosine C gives me two. So it's minus two, I'm just gonna put it in alphabetical order, A, B, cosine C. So now let's stop and make sure we understand where that comes from. If I take A cosine C times B, I get A, B cosine C, negative. And if I take A cosine C times B, I get another A cosine C, negative. So I end up with two of them, so I have negative two A cosine C. Do I, is, is this thing all multiplied out now? No, no what, else do, what else do I get? A cosine C squared, which gives me A squared cosine squared C equals C squared. Okay. Okay, should we just stop and memorize that formula right there? Yeah, yeah, right. It's ugly. Okay. Um, so now let's reorganize. Ooh, look at this. That looks kind of cool. I get a sine squared and I get a cosine squared. That's one, right? So let's combine those, pull out my A. So I'm gonna do two steps at once here. If I move this over, kind of just reorganize, that's all I'm doing, just reorganizing. I'm going to go A squared times sine squared C plus cosine squared C plus B squared minus two AB cosine C equals c squared. You with me? Yeah. Hear me barking? Good. So what's sine squared c plus cosine squared c? One. That was our first trigonometric identity. So then what we have, gone. a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c equals c squared. Law of, gee, what do you think we should call this? Law of Cosines. Huge. Huge. So all this is, here's how you need to look at. It's Pythagorean theorem. This right here. It's Pythagorean theorem. But with an adjustment in case it's not a right triangle. Law of cosines. So, how do we memorize this? Well, it's Pythagorean theorem with some adjustment, but what is the adjustment? It's side squared plus side squared minus two of that same side, those same sides times each other, times the cosine of the angle between. Okay? So, let's go to example town, okay? Um, well, first of all, ooh, I wonder if we have to worry about a second triangle in this situation. Look up here. Look at the red stuff that's circled. Which situation is that, going back to geometry? No. Uh, the angle's between, so it's said as... Side, side angle, side. Side, angle, side. Side, angle, side was one of the ways you can prove two triangles congruent. So we only have to worry about one unique answer here. Okay, because if I make this 10 longer, well, it's going to make my X longer. If I make my 17 shorter, it's going to make my X shorter. If I make the angle different, it's going to change my value of X. It's wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to go like this. Example, Festomania. I'm just going to do two examples. Okay, maybe three. <laughs> so let's go, well, let's go back to... I don't know if I, 10, 65, 17, X. Let's go ahead and write out what this would be in law of cosine form. 10 squared plus 17 squared minus, okay, now you're gonna help me out. Well, use your, use your formula. 
2 times 10 times 17 times cosine 65 equals c squared. Okay? So now we just got to be careful when we're typing this in. You type it in, you take the square root of it, and, you're, and we're done. All right. And I think that's the same answer, same example we used on the other one, 1017. So hopefully we get 15.7. cosines. Now, how can you tell this is not a law of sine yeah, situation? Because we don't have an angle on the opposite side. Okay? So now there's another situation where you can use law of cosines. And you can actually use law of cosines in this scenario. So let's say if I had 10, 7, and 12. Okay? Now, let's talk a little bit of theory here. If I was going to take a look at cosine, cosine, we chopped it from 0 to 180. So inverse cosine, you can get answers from 0 to 180 degrees. So cosine, it will give you obtuse angles. So if I'm going to find any of these three angles to get started on solving the whole triangle, I should find x, because that's going to be the biggest angle, okay? I wouldn't want to find the little one and then have to deal with that crappy thing about law of sines later on, and just trust me, find the bigger angle here, let's write it out. This is the angle I want. So what should I write? Seven squared. Plus? 10 squared, good job realizing I got to deal with the 7 and the 10. And the 12 is going to be the thing that's by itself. Because I want to find the angle that's between those two. Okay? 7 squared plus 10 squared minus 2 times 7 times 10 cosine of x equals 12 squared. Have you guys done this before? You guys should do great. I'm serious, you guys just got this big old buildup of mathematical energy that we haven't tapped into since last Thursday. Okay? So now let's see, look at what happens. If I'm going to move some stuff around and try and get to cosine of x, I'm going to have to go 49 plus 100 minus 140 cosine of x equals 144. Can I subtract these two? No, because one of them is attached to the cosine, the other two are just numbers. So no, 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 I can't do that. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to subtract my 144 over, or actually I'll subtract my 149. So I get negative 140 cosine x equals negative 5. Divide by 140, so cosine x equals 5 over 140, so let's do inverse cosine of 5 over 140. Calculate that for me, please, since you guys got that. A 7.9 degrees. So, so if I gave you that situation and said, I want you to solve that triangle. And I solve the triangle means find all the sides, all the angles. I'm going to find the, that angle right there. Well, wait a minute. Could either one of these other angles be obtuse? Because there's enough room for an obtuse angle in the 87.9. But could this opposite the 7 be obtuse? No, it's got to be smaller than 87.9. Could the angle opposite the 10 be obtuse? No. So I already found the biggest angle. I, gotta, I don't have to worry about obtuse angles anymore. So then I could just go ahead and write these 
I could say sine, I'm not going to finish this, but I got 87.9 over 12 equals, let's go y and z, sine of 10 over y equals sine of, no, not sine of 10, sine of z over 7, God, sorry, sine of y over 10, and then I could just solve for, for y and z, and I don't have to worry about any obtuse angles anymore. Okay? So, one last example, and then we'll be done. This is not drawn to scale. Don't worry about that at all. Okay? Oh. There is no hypotenuse anymore. All right. Yeah, the longest side. Yep. So that means, but if your longest side doesn't that angle have to be your biggest angle? Yeah, it is. So that's my point that's why that we don't have to worry about obtuse angles anymore. So law of sines is our friend, because law of sines, based upon how that works and how we chopped it, we're going to find something from zero to ninety every time. Okay, this is not drawn to scale. I probably should redraw, but I'm kind of short on time, so let's just go ahead and leave it like this. Um, 10, um, uh, 13, and 25. I want you to find x. Go. 